Hello, everyone. So, uh, hello from Belgium. Um, I am Pascal Paulus from the UDH, the University of Liège, and I am working on the campus of Jean Blou. Jean Blou, it's, it's a part of the University of Liège. Belgium is a small country, so we, we have campuses that are not at the same spot than the university. Um, so, uh, yeah, I made the first uh, small slide of uh, presentation of how the uh, Erasmus project, the PERMA module, was implemented in our university. Uh, then I will go forward with the lesson that were learned uh, in uh, teaching this module, and uh, then I will present some student designs. Um, I have a, I was going to, yeah, but it will, it will come back, I'm sure. <laughs> so first um, we implement, so, so our uh, university implemented this course and it was for a uh, four ECTS uh, course. And we decided to give this course to uh, third years of uh, bioengineers. So they are in their third year. So they already had uh, some, soil science and some, some botany, uh, but they, they didn't have a lot of uh, very specific uh, cultural techniques and they didn't choose their master yet. Well, they already have an option, but they don't, they don't follow the, their master courses yet. So for example, in our batch of uh, students, of uh, uh, test students for this year, we had a lot of students that were enrolled for the uh, forestry master. So rather students that were going to learn how to manage forest and natural spaces, rather than uh, students that were going to, uh, to manage agricultural spaces. So it's kind of interesting because in permaculture, you, you're looking to go towards permanent uh, systems. So it's interesting, but you also try to make a transition from agricultural, the main agricultural systems towards something more uh, ecological. So uh, it was also very um, interesting to see how many girls, th there were many girls in, 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 the, in the class, because I, I don't know why, <laughs> but the, the course apparently appealed more to girls than to boys. Um, yeah, and we didn't, we weren't able to have any mobility activity outside of Belgium because of the corona crisis, but uh, that's okay. So maybe next year, we hope. So uh, in Belgium, we started the course in uh, early February, February, and the end of the sessions were on mid-May. So the course is already finished. Uh, the evaluation is uh, for 60% on practical assignments. So practical assignments uh, are actually two design projects. The first one is a group project with three people uh, in each group. And um, another one, another project is an individual uh, design project. So it, it, it allows us to see uh, how the students work in group and how they manage this group um, um, creativity, but also how by themselves they can conduct a project or not. Uh, so we chose to, um, to implement, not, not to implement, but to, uh, to let the group design occur on a um, on a field of the university. So we have like a field of, uh, uh, yeah, it's uh, 60 meters or on 40 meters. It's not very big, but also not very small. Um, and so each group had the same field, that's a university field. And we gave them like a, um, a dream, you know, like I'm a dreamer and I want to, uh, for example, to, um, collect seeds. I, I, I want to make sure that I collect a lot of different seeds from a lot of different uh, plants. So what do you propose? I have this budget and uh, I would like, yes, to that 
that it would be made according to the, the, the uh, permaculture ethics. So that was the group um, work. Each group had a different dream. Um, and the individual assignment was uh, free. So they chose their uh, own field and they chose their own dream. So they what, what they wanted to, to materialize, but always according to uh, the permaculture ethics. So uh, we also have an exam because it was stated like that in the in the in the uh, university engagement. So we will have an exam, but it will be a, ref a reflective exam. And we asked for for some participation, so we put uh, one extra uh, point or one extra one less point uh, if they don't participate. <laughs> you have to make it a bit interesting. <laughs> So um, we had uh, five theoretical sessions of three hours. Uh, it was sometimes online and sometimes on campus. And we tried to make it uh, as, as interactive as possible, but it was really difficult for everyone. For me, because it was the first time that was, as I was give, giving a course. And also for uh, the students, because, you know, teaching with a distance is really hard for them also. Um, then we had four full pra practical days, and there there, there was no dis distance, so they they were they were on field. Uh, so we had two field visits, and on those field vid visits, we uh, we proposed to the farmer to give some help in his farm uh, for some yeah you know like preparing uh, some uh, vegetable beds uh, or um, you know like. Uh, Putting some hay here, uh, some straw, sorry, here, and uh, so so it it was really nice for the students because we realized that uh, seeing them on on field it was it was a lot more efficient for them to to learn. So they saw this, they were like, oh, this I can use in my design, uh, in my design uh, for this, and yeah, it was very uh, stimulating for them. And we had also two days where they had a meeting with um, with um, a designer, you know, so so we could you know help them in their design. So we could uh, try to to challenge them a little bit, like yeah, but this water, where where does it come from, and where where does it goes to, and if if there is a pollution there, what do you do? And it was really interesting for them and for me. So here are some pictures, but I will not go too long on it. Um, so the feedback, so the lesson learned uh, from my own teaching already myself, it, it's kind of worked in my head during the night. So I was uh, evaluating myself already. Um, sometimes I was wondering why the students not see the purpose of the, of this chapter um why the interaction with the student not work at some at some points where they're too tired it was always a lesson on the friday afternoon so the students were already like dead from the week <laughs> but yeah why, why did it work and what would i as a student have wanted to see to to enjoy to learn to um get from this course uh, yeah, I saw that learning from the field is the most efficient, efficient indeed. And mea culpa, I gave the assignments quite late in the semester because I had to create them. And uh, so, yeah, I got the critique and I felt, well, that the assignment quite a little bit too late because they already had a lot of work. So it was not easy, but they still did it. So <laughs> nice for <me. laughs> Um, so feedback from students, uh, when we started the course, we had a survey. The survey uh, was free to know what the student expected, what the student already knew, not knew, not knew, but they really expected a lot more uh, ecological gardening course. Um, but the feedback from the course is really good, mostly, uh, especially on the file visit and the manual work. But um, even though they understood that permaculture was more a design system, I think they remained a little bit frustrated with 
not having learned in detail uh, what was an ecological gardening, uh, yeah, method. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I, we also see in the design project that there is um, a difference between students, difference between groups. Some students really take it like at heart and they, um, they really want to concretize something they had in their head. Uh, it's really the, 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 the occasion. They, they really want to, to do that really well, to think that through. And some students are more uh, like at school, like, is it this that I have to do? I'm not sure what I want to do. And it's it's a bit, um, yeah, I'm not sure how to take it because some students are, are like full into it and some students are like, yeah, I don't know, maybe this, <laughs> it's, it's a little bit difficult. I think I have to dig into that a bit more. Um, yeah, and it was difficult due to online teaching for them. So this, they did all this, and so we we tried as much as possible to have uh, to have them present when giving the course. But we had your rules to follow, so it was really difficult. Uh, so yeah, I wanted to put back the definition of permaculture according to David Ongren. So it's, it still is a design system for resilient living at the basics. Okay, it's it's first for um, farming and so on, but it's also for uh, a more broad approaches, and that's I think that's uh, where it's hard for the students to see that it's not only just for uh, farming and gardening. So um, yeah, next year I I'm already. Um, I'm already, uh, yeah, thinking about what what will I do next year, and I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about, but I'm not sure yet. Maybe you can give some feedback. But thinking about starting with ecological gardening, like you want this, I give you this, but that's all I give you, <laughs> and um, and see what they really expect, and then tell them see, this ecological gardening is actually comes from all this ethics and design and. Um, uh, process and it doesn't make much sense if it's just in your garden. Um, so, yeah, and then I would start the second course with the assignments that I give to late this year. So, yeah, uh, I think it's important for me to give the to give the entire course, but following with the same examples, like when you see design or techniques, always having one or two big examples of, of design projects that I show here, you put this here because uh, yeah, because you want to make interaction or you know this technique, they used it here because it allows them to, to do this and that. But having like main projects that they understand in depth, it can really help, I think, to understand the, the full depth of permaculture. What, what you can reach, what you can achieve uh, with a, a good design process. Uh, more practice, I'm thinking maybe of maybe making some perma lunches like for the, the students who really want to put their hands in, 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 in earth every week, like to make some grafting, to make some compost piles, you know, so they can follow and learn on field stuff, even though it's small little things. Uh, sadly, we don't have a form uh, on campus, we have experimental uh, places, but we don't have a form, you know. So I'm thinking about it. So I'm um, I'm I'm not sure what time it is, and if I still have a little bit of time to present some some design examples. So we didn't receive them all yet because, as I said, there are the group design and there are the uh, individual design. And so we already had the group designs. The individual design, they can, can give it back uh, later. So now I will only, only present a few group designs. Uh, so for the designs, I uh, asked for, um, they had some constraints, like the, the constraint of the field. There was like train rails uh, passing next to, next to the, Next to the field, uh, there were uh, there were some budget constraints. Um, 
I also asked them the sector analysis, the uh, hydrological, uh, not hydrologic, hydro, yeah, uh, water uh, plants, uh, the the pathways, uh, the 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 flows, like flows of 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 materials, flows of, of, of compost. So they made all those um, those um, layers for their mass plan. I also asked them to make a functional decomposition of the dream that I gave them. So I gave them the dream. They had to make the functional decomposition to see exactly which functions had to be um, uh, fulfilled by their design. And I also asked them to uh, make uh, auto evaluations, like did my design respect the ethics of the permaculture? And if I had to add some improvement to the design, if I had time and money, what could I do? So uh, yeah, I know it's on a little piece of land, so you miss the landscape approach. Uh, there is not, not a lot of slope, it's a, it's a pretty much flat uh, field, sadly, but um, it's already something. <laughs> I will show you now. So this uh, design project was actually, um, so do you see my mouse or not? Can you tell me if you see my mouse? I'm not sure. No. Yeah, we can see it. You can see it? Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> So here uh, you have the train passing by, so just uh, for uh, information. So you have the north, uh, south and west uh, and, and east, it's even here. And the, the purpose of this design was to, um, the client loved photography and the client wanted to have like a, a, a natural uh, space for to have as many birds as possible. So the client wanted to have a spot with as many birds as possible and to be able to take pictures of them and to observe them. So that was a pretty, very natural biodiversity um, um, or, or um, yeah, based uh, design. So it was really interesting. You have accesses here. They are not uh, shown pretty much, but you have accesses here. You have um, uh, pathways. And then next to that, you have um, experiment, experimental um, uh, plots of lens. So here, they kind of um, give a lot of importance to the water, uh, the water parts. They wanted to have some uh, water spots with plastic layers in it and some without it because they, they, were, uh, they did some research and they wanted to have to make sure that even though they would be at rot, there would always be water in, in it, uh, so not to lose the biodiversity. They also added by themselves um, an, an island in the middle, and they really took into account the fact that there were some big winds coming from there. And so, so they added a lot of big trees in there. And they also, uh, here, since there is the train, they also add a wall, like a green wall, like with um, ivy uh, growing on it, but also with small spots for birds to make their nests. So it was really an interesting uh, uh, design because they really, you, you saw that they really looked into it a lot. They gave us like names of plants and, and you have to do this, but not that, but you know, they, they were like, self-involved when they were presenting and that was awesome to see them like it would be their project they would be as involved as, as that so that's amazing this project here uh, was so it's the same huh? here you have the train there, there you have accesses this project was uh, the seeds project so um, you wanted to be able to have as many seeds as possible uh, to be conserved so they uh, had some plants here. Here, uh, there is a big greenhouse and they started to add some seeds beds, like different beds to add the, some, some seeds. And they added a, a zone, a natural zone here and in there, and they stayed it. If you want to do more seeds, you, you eat the, the zone five. But if you want to do less, you let the zone five go over the seeds, bank, the, the seeds beds. Uh, it was really nice to see also um, that they 
they called the guy. They didn't know how to make seeds, so they called the guy from uh, a seed a seed making uh, association. They called him and they had like an interview. It was really really well made, and so they had really interesting um, interesting uh, information from that, and they could also much better tell you need this, you don't need that, you need this. With this budget, you can do that and you cannot do that. So it was really interesting. And this one, it's the most beautiful. <laughs> it's like kindergartening, <laughs> very artistic design. But that was uh, like a, a tea shop. A tea shop. So uh, y there were uh, different tea um, sorts that were uh, cultivated. And the purpose was to be able to sell teas, to give tea to people have a small, a very uh, nice, cozy uh, place to, you know, to, uh, to make tea, uh, to, yeah, to drink your tea. It's kind of a mandala approach. I don't know why they want, they wanted the mandala, <laughs> absolutely. And you have here the spirals, it's a, a zone five, it's a wild zone because they wanted to to remove the view from uh, the, the trees. It's it's so short, explain all the work that there is between those plants, but I'm sorry, I have to give the word to, to Claudia and now because otherwise we will never finish this afternoon. <laughs> so thank you very much. If there is any question, you can ask maybe after uh, Claudia presented, then we can. Um... Uh, first of all, uh, I am, um, uh, teaching at the uh, Faculty of uh, Horticulture uh, on uh, University of Agronomic Science and um, Veterinary Medicine. And uh, I uh, joined this wonderful and uh, this wonderful project and uh, permaculture. And I want to present you uh, today uh, what uh, the uh, students, our students, uh, made uh, on uh, the permaculture uh, design studio uh, because it's an optional um, course, uh, the perma permaculture. Um, uh, the students uh, who integrate the, this uh, design, uh, this course, uh, are the students on second year um, and third year of uh, horticulture faculty. And um, um, it, uh, it was uh, very interesting. Um, I want to, to say that um, in that moment, uh, we uh, made uh, th uh, three uh, session uh, on four session on design studio. That means uh, we are not uh, finish uh, this um, design studio on permaculture. And um, that's uh, why uh, what I present uh, today is not, uh, uh, it's a uh, um, work ongoing. Uh, first of all, uh, at the beginning of this uh, uh, design studio uh, course, um, uh, we are um, present uh, the um, firm, uh, of our partner, uh, Romanian partner, uh, Institute of uh, Permaculture of Romania, uh, because it, it was important to know uh, the context uh, where uh, our student will um, uh, made uh, their um, exercise on um, a design studio. And um, it was important to know uh, the uh, geographical and climatic characteristics and uh, all the information uh, about uh, the firm of uh, our partners because uh, in uh, the end of uh, this uh, four session of design studio in permaculture, our students will, uh, will visit the firm uh, and uh, will made uh, uh, we hope so that uh, we uh, be able to apply uh, their uh, small project of um, uh, productive uh, spaces because uh, we think uh, of um, of a method uh, of um, 
productive spaces uh, who develop on small spaces. Um, and uh, uh, it was necessary of our uh, students to, to uh, know the context uh, uh, of, uh, of this firm. After uh, this uh, information, uh, uh, they will be able to integrate on um, a design uh, uh, project. And uh, uh, in the end uh, of these permaculture courses, uh, they will be able to implement the projects uh, on the field. And uh, with, um, um, with the pandemic condition, we have uh, uh, a very uh, hard support and uh, we work very close uh, with uh, our uh, partners and uh, they, um, um, they made uh, uh, and they made for us uh, the photo of the field and uh, um, we receive uh, that photo uh, from the farm um, and uh, the work in progress uh, all the uh, working that uh, Alex and Yonuts uh, made uh, until now on uh, that farm. Uh, And uh, the design studio, um, on the, this design studio courses, we adopt uh, uh, this method of uh, small productive uh, spaces, uh, which can be insert, uh, inserted in uh, the space who are uh, undeveloped on the farm sol și suflet. Uh, that's why uh, we um, try to um, uh, to think at the, the small, uh, small uh, spaces because uh, it was more appropriate and um, uh, more easily to apply it on uh, uh, on the farm. Um, the concept of um, uh, this uh, small productive uh, spaces uh, were developed around uh, several issues aimed to uh, at achieving solution for a small permaculture garden. Um, and um, this, um, uh, and we start uh, the presentation, we have a hybrid uh, in that moment, uh, we have uh, uh, the um, online courses, theoretical courses and uh, the design studio, uh, it was um, in the campus. Uh, and um, uh, we start the sessions uh, with the presentation. Uh, with the scale of the project, the cardinal points, uh, the uh, sun sector of the site, uh, all this information uh, necessary uh, to make the, after uh, the, the solution. Uh, and um, uh, this picture, uh, devil, uh, on this um, picture, see uh, that uh, our student did, uh, students uh, are develop uh, uh, the uh, design uh, studio uh, courses. Um, and, um, uh, in the two session, we uh, uh, talk about um, accessibility, uh, we talk about um, uh, the space, uh, the zoning of our future productive spaces, the function, uh, and also we talk uh, the importance of the vegetable and other, other associated plants um, and also the form, the characteristic, the texture, the color, all the uh, natural form that uh, they uh, needed. And um, after all, I we think uh, the creativity and the sensibility, uh, it will be um, necessary for uh, the development of uh, the, this uh, permaculture projects. Uh, and uh, we um, 
uh, choose uh, to to uh, made uh, this uh, little garden on uh, the small spaces uh, 10 meters on uh, 15 uh, meters that means uh, 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 150 uh, square meters uh, and uh, these are uh, the first sketches that our uh, students are, are made. Um, we, uh, our method, it's uh, um, me and my colleague Vladimir Bok, uh, who is uh, also uh, a landscape architect, um, we think of uh, the small exercise with um, a different uh, task that develop the, um, uh, all the tasks uh, that uh, this student uh, will be needed for uh, the, uh, the final uh, solution. And um, we think appropriate to integrate the, the list of uh, the plans the, the, the new plants uh, who uh, students create on our campus, uh, tomatoes, uh, basilic, tagetes, uh, who are uh, uh, and after uh, they uh, maybe uh, they use uh, these um, uh, plants on, um, on uh, the, the fields. And for the moment, we have uh, some drafts uh, of uh, their solution. Uh, the scale is 100. Uh, and uh, the, uh, this project is ORC pro uh, pro uh, project. And uh, for uh, um, the last uh, two sessions, we think uh, to explain to our students um, what is necessary for the technical details. Um, that means um, uh, working with the planting plan, um, think about the plant uh, associations, uh, planting shadows uh, annually and year uh, after year, and in the end, um, how uh, some information on uh, how to uh, implement uh, the project on the field and uh, uh, and uh, uh, yesterday evening it was the third uh, session uh, of uh, design studio and uh, they realize uh, this type of um, uh, solution uh, they work uh, individually and uh, this is uh, some samples of um, uh, what they work. And uh, in the end, uh, they uh, will um, have uh, uh, the solution and uh, they will work uh, of uh, the presentation of uh, this, uh, this project. And uh, the final uh, session uh, that will be next uh, week, uh, we want to uh, provide uh, the exercise with the list of material and the list of quantities uh, of uh, the elements uh, that they use in their project solution with uh, some uh, information on um, how to apply the solution uh, on the terrain because it's more important to have this uh, information because in June for two days, the, they will uh, be on the farm uh, Solshi uh, Souflet. Uh, this is uh, my presentation. Uh, we hope uh, that uh, the future project uh, of uh, our students will look like this. Thank you very much. It's great to see so many students yes. from Catania from from uh, Bucharest great and uh, all the work you you've put uh, together to to uh, make these designs it's it's impressive yes thanks a lot as well for your your work and participation that's how we we managed to uh, to improve this project and next semester i'm sure that based on all your your experiences in this project will will improve the course and uh, 
and managed to, uh, to achieve the objectives presented by Chen Su in the beginning of this session. Um, just want to, to, to ask if there are many questions, if there are any questions to, to Pascal and, and Claudia. No questions, but okay. uh, if I can say a few words about this course. Yes, please, Andre. Uh, well, my experience with uh, the Romanian university, of course, <laughs> Uh, it's so much to say because it's about uh, permaculture, uh, all philosophy, uh, even a lifestyle for, uh, for some. But uh, now I just say that I'm very glad that uh, academic education understands more and more that permaculture, it's uh, not just a kind of, uh, I don't know, uh, hippie gardener movement. <laughs> or something like that, like that. And uh, now they embrace, embraced uh, this philosophy. Uh, so certainly now with uh, the theoretical experience and research related uh, resources of educational institution, uh, we can all benefit from this. So it's a very welcome uh, course. It's great to hear. Very, it's nice to hear uh, those comments from you, Andre. And uh, I'm sure just uh, everybody liked it. Uh, I, I couldn't follow myself these classes, but uh, I really like when uh, when we can hear from students. Mihai, uh, you have your mic open. Do you want to intervene? Yes, I actually want to carry on the idea which uh, which uh, Andre stipulated earlier. Uh, I love I love this subject a lot, and I was really happy being selected to be part of the of the course. But what it was, because uh, since I started this course, I actually made some ties with the Permaculture Association in UK, as I live in UK, despite being a student in Romania. But, and I had a question, a general question about the course, because a friend of mine asked me about it, and I could answer, despite I want to debate it. He asked me the following, you know, the land we have for agriculture in, in the world is used about a third, yeah? And the other two, another third is used by the by the buildings and everywhere we live. Is permaculture sustainable economically to, to feed all the population we have in the world? And unfortunately, I couldn't answer because I didn't find any statistic or any researches on this on this matter at all. And uh, what I want actually to ask you, if you have any kind of statistic being more in the field than me and everything else. Would you have more information about that? Will be permaculture a way forward from now on to feed the population? Don't forget we are 7.8 billion at the moment and the population is growing. Or will it stay as a niche culture of horticulture? I, I, I can take a chance at this. Um, I've often been asked this question and maybe we can also ask it in the other way, is will, can industrial agriculture ever feed us? if it has destroyed half the planet's resources. And if it continues to try to feed us, it will destroy the remaining 50%. Our only way is to go back and work with nature rather than against nature. And that's where permaculture offers all these uh, beautiful solutions that we, um, we work sustainably, we regenerate the soils, um, healthy soils attract a lot of moisture, and from that, um, we grow high quality vitality foods, our health and uh, livelihoods uh, starts improving, and that sets a positive chain reaction. Whereas if we eat this garbage industrial food, it's just, uh, we're just gonna get sicker and sicker on it. So it's, it's a complete polarity. Um, the reason why you won't find many studies on this, is they've all been scrubbed off the internet about permaculture, regenerative approaches, can they feed the world? Because the dominant narrative that the media controls is industrial based food. I'm sorry to say, but that's the reality. I can maybe, I don't know what else you just said. So Mihai, uh, thank you very much for your question. Um, I, I would like to say that it is maybe hard to, to with statistics and that kind of, of things because 
permaculture is, as we said, uh, a design methodology rather than uh, really a, a model, like an agricultural model. So it's it's hard to to tell this is uh, econom financially sustainable and this not. Also, with the ethic, the ethic of a uh, fair share, one of the three ethics is fair share. Like, you have to uh, fairly share. It's really hard to implement this ethic in our um, economical paradigm right now, and it doesn't. Uh, so it doesn't really make uh, permaculture the uh, pathway to become rich because, you know, fair share. But um, and also uh, it's. Maybe not right now the thing that will make you i i think really sustainable, but it will make make you sustainable in 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 a timely ma uh, manner because you're going to be more resilient you are going to be more uh um resistant to shocks to to problems in water uh supply in problems in electricity supply so to make your, yourself more resilient make make sure that you are more uh, economically viable on the long term you know uh, so so it's, it's really linked the economical viability of your project is really linked to the um to the bigger picture of what's happening right now in the world and what will be happening let, later in the world and uh, and so last lastly yeah it's it i think it's it's um it really proposes a more diversified approach on agricultural uh, systems. And maybe it's difficult in this um, world right now to di diversify all the forms. And maybe that's why there are little studies on that. Uh, but I don't know. Maybe I don't have all the answers, but that's my take on, on, on this question. But if you want to make a permaculture uh, project financially viable, you have to put that in your constraint that have to be part of, of your design constraint, of your main purpose of your design constraint. And, and then you will, you will be able to make that economically viable. If it's not your purpose, then you won't still. Can I intervene then? Yes, of course. Right. Uh, to set out the record straight, uh, I'm 100% agree with the permaculture way of doing things. Yeah, I do have a small orchard and I try to implement permaculture in my orchard as well on the land that I have left. I do believe is the right, right way to feed the people and I do believe that's what's going to be used for my family in the future. Yeah, what I, uh, what I can't explain is, is not not for myself, but to explain to a chat to somebody. I found the kind of resilience and resistance uh, between the between the permaculture organization in UK and the Royal Institute of Horticulture UK. Yeah, I don't know why they don't have really a kind of more ties in it. Because if you ask somebody from the Royal Institute of Horticulture, they are bending the noses and then they don't say much about permaculture. And that's the reason I don't know why it's not more communication between all the horticulture body to implement more of that. Yeah. And with the, with the lack of information, you with the lack of information about permaculture and what could produce and what cannot, and uh, not uh, not forwarding the ideas to others will be really hard for this subject to go over and over, isn't it? I agree. <laughs> Maybe Eddie, you want to add a, uh, on this or Paula? Uh, maybe just briefly, the, the horticulturists um, still use poison because they don't Correct. see they've got a slug problem. Um, Correct. They don't see they've got a duct deficiency. They've got a, a very different mindset. And until you do permaculture, where the ethics actually opens up something in your heart and you can actually embrace the ethics, the people care the earth care and the fair share, um, you can't switch people uh, onto permaculture if they can't open up the heart. And that's where it starts. And in fact, if you look at most of the third world, it's not um, the, glo the global industrial agribusiness that's feeding them. They're feeding themselves. Um, India has mostly been fed by themselves. 
um, South America, a lot of Africa. Um, we think industrial agriculture is feeding the world. They're only feeding the fat people in the USA and in Europe. An answer, I believe, uh, uh, how Mr. Sensu Caruana uh, began his uh, presentation. He said something, I don't know if I can cite him very well, but if you want to solve a problem, you have to change the framework. It's the same thing here. So everybody can eat, but not in the same uh, mind frame like now. So maybe it's a bit philosophical, but uh, this is the answer, I believe. Antoine, may I add a very, very short reflection, please? Please, yes. So my idea is that uh, we, we have to uh, consider permaculture because it's very, very important contribution to the ag agroecological transition. Uh, I mean, in this moment, we have to change the agriculture in, in the planet. So I don't, I don't like if we consider permaculture as an alternative uh, 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 practice in, uh, or in, in agriculture. We don't have more time uh, to, to show who is the best, who is the, uh, no? Uh, we have to consider the contribution of permaculture as we have to consider the, the, the contribution of regenerative agriculture of organic agriculture because of the control uh, system, the monitoring the control system. Uh, we have to consider the contribution of biodynamic agriculture for its uh, uh, a view of uh, the farm as a, a closed, uh, 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 closed loop organism. I mean, we have to put all the best practice together in order to change agriculture. And today we can, together we can, because uh, uh, the European Green Deal uh, are, are, are saying the same thing, the farm to fork strategy, the agenda 2030. So I think we, we, we have to take the best of, uh, of all this experience and uh, base it on the efforts and the, on the sacrifice of the pioneers of permaculture, pioneers of organic agriculture, pioneers. And, uh, and uh, we have to bring this, these uh, topics inside the university, inside the institutions. I think this is the, the, our, our challenge for the next years. Permaculture is uh, an ideal uh, system. But as I said, um, Paolo is uh, a mean for the transition uh, period. And for that, uh, I agree also for the sustainability of, of this uh, of this uh, systems in relation to the food and to the amount of food can we have what uh, what we have to to try to address for uh, to address our efforts is to also to estimate uh, which is the direct and indirect uh, benefit of, of permaculture. Because there are some direct uh, benefit are related, uh, could be related to the food, because of course we have to establish one system provide food, enough food for the community. And uh, Developing the, the the interaction among the different uh, or the several community, we can balance the diet or we can balance uh, the produce each one can provide. But uh, of course, uh, this is also one goal: try to estimate how many food. Of course, there are some indirect uh, benefits are related to the environmental. Uh, status, the biodiversity exploited or the increasing of biodiversity in the system, the air pollution, water pollution benefit. But I think uh, could be, uh, these are two goals. One is provide enough food 
for the community because one leg uh, of one actor uh, could have uh, one range of uh, production, minimum and maximum. But uh, uh, in any case, we have to estimate how many people can stay there and can be uh, supported by this environmental uh, of this uh, permaculture uh, system. Um, going to, to reply to my um, uh, colleague from Romania uh, regarding his question about permaculture in the UK. Because um, I'm also based in the UK and I'm also part of the um, uh, British uh, Permaculture Association, which, yeah, we have to admit that today is the biggest, biggest in the world. Um, and he was asking why uh, Permaculture Association is not linked with um, Royal Horticulture Society, for example. So there is no link between university and um, and permaculture. So firstly, uh, Royal Society, uh, Royal Horticulture Society is not not uh, not an university. Uh, so they don't uh, teach university degree courses in uh, in Royal Horticulture Society. So that's one, one difference. Um, the second point is that um, I feel that sometimes the discussion goes too much on the the comparison between permaculture and uh, intensive agriculture. We, we compare with food production. Uh, if you want the closest one, uh, people compare permaculture with organic agriculture. They, they might say, okay, which one is the best? Which one can, can feed us? Uh, from my experience with um, UK Permaculture Association, I can tell you that uh, one of the, most of the top, uh, top uh, 10 teachers that are feeding their families from supermarket. Okay, so even the, the biggest ones, they don't feed the, their families from, uh, from this principle. Uh, in my opinion, if you uh, study closely, you'll realize that today, uh, if you're talking about these financial benefits, the most people who are making money from permaculture are the people who are teaching permaculture or the people who are selling books about permaculture. So it's wrong for, for us to, to compare ourselves strictly from an economical point of view. Uh, so this is a design process that have to, to, to be uh, discussed uh, and integrated in uh, human lifestyle and not compared uh, uh, directly uh, economically because uh, normally we are going to lose this, this battle. A, compar a strict comparison directly with uh, intensive agriculture, unfortunately, uh, will, uh, will make permaculture to remain on a niche, uh, niche product for a long time from now. That was my, my comment. Thank you very much.